we all go a little mad sometimes, don't we? Hi everyone, my name is Fab and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to talk about a book that made the history in uh, movies and that's Psycho by Robert Bloch. This book became famous because of the movie adaptation by Alfred Hitchcock in 1960 that was made just a uh, year after that this book was published. Um, and uh, this book talks about, um, it was inspired by true crimes that happened uh, in the 50s and uh, that involved the serial killer Ed Gein. He was um, a man living in the countryside that became famous because of what was found into his house. So when the police showed up at the place, they found uh, furniture and uh, uh, object made with human skin and human bones, and that's why the house was called the House of Horrors. That story inspired many books and many Many movies like the Texas Chance of Massacre and the Silence of the Lambs, but uh, its first representation in um, um, the mainstream it was with um, <clears throat> this book and a Hitchcock movie. So, what is this book about? Basically, um, it starts with Mary Crane, that is um, a young lady. She's in her mid twenties. And uh, she works in a bank, and one day this uh, wealthy man shows up with a lot of money in cash. And he wants to use this money for uh, his daughter's wedding, and uh, start uh, to um, uh, flirt a little bit with Mary, and she's a little bit annoyed by this because he's a middle-aged man, she's very young, and he's a bit like annoying the way he's uh, eating up on her. So when the owner of the bank asks her, to put the money in the safe, she decided instead to keep it for herself. And uh, we follow her through her escape with this money. And uh, while she's escaping, there's like a rainstorm and uh, she's forced to stop somewhere. And in the highway, she got lost. And suddenly she arrived at this motel that at the beginning, it looks like is abandoned because there are no lights or anything. And uh, then she realized instead that there is someone living up to the motel and that is the owner. And that's when we meet uh, Norman Bates, that is the main character of this book and one of the most famous characters probably in the history of books. When she stops at this motel, that's when things uh, get weird and creepy. I won't say anything else, but if you know about uh, the story of this book and uh, if, if you have seen one of the adaptation from this book, you probably know how it ends up. Anyway, um, this book uh, is really good. I really enjoyed it and uh, it's really short because it's just 153 pages. And um, it's interesting because of what, how, how the relationship between this character Norman Bates and uh, his mother is represented. There is some kind of uh, weird um, undertone into this relationship that and the good thing about this author is that he's, he kind of plays with your mind about what what is this relationship about and um, if you know if you have already watched the movie obviously when this first was this first came out there were not movie ad adaptation, but now there is uh, not only the Alfred Hitchcock one, but there is also the remake by Gus Van Sant in 1998 with Julian Moore and Anne Hesch. Um, and also they made uh, the TV series uh, Bates Motel that is really good and I highly recommend you to watch that one because in that one um, the relationship between Norman Bates and his mother is um, shown into a deeper level so you you can see how the mind of this character is uh, developing through for the time and um, what surprised me about this book was how the character was described the main character of norman bates because if you watch one of the movie adaptation of all of them you always see this nice uh, um, uh, good-looking guy 
that is a bit shy and really doesn't know how to deal with other people, uh, how to talk to them. And uh, instead, in this uh, book, uh, the <clears throat> picture I had in my mind about uh, this person, Norman Bates, it's, it was totally different from the movie adaptations because it's not a young guy, he's a middle-aged man. And in my mind, I was picturing him like... Um, the guy from the main character from um, Human Centipede 2. Uh, if you are a horror fan, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's the um, short guy with glasses, a little bit bald, a little bit overweight, and that's how I pictured him. So what was different from what I've, I've saw in in, in the screens um, was that um, it was not like a really sympathetic uh, character, like in the adaptation since it's like nice and good looking you can understand why people fall into his trap but in this book you you're really not sympathetic with him because um he's not very good looking he's also a bit weird because he's a middle-aged man and he still lives with his mother and so you think about hmm, this is really weird about this character anyway i don't want to make spoilers but there are some things in this book that are very different from the um, movie ad adaptation, like the uh, famous shower scene here in this book is very is much more brutal. And there is also um, um, a mention to add to the story of Edgin at the end of the book, and I didn't expect that because I thought it was it, Robert Block was just inspired by this story, but he actually introduced a little bit. Of, uh, of the story of Edgin into the last chapters of this book. Um, so what can I say? I highly recommend you to read this book. Uh, it won't take long and it's a really page turn because every chapter ends like with a little twist and uh, so you, you're engaged in the story and you want to go on. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos. Uh, there are more coming up because uh, I want to um, uh, make other reviews of other books that I've read during this time. And uh, if you have uh, already read this book and you have an opinion about it, or if you want to know more, just leave a comment down below and I'll see you into the next one. Bye bye.